Hello, we're going to pay a bit more attention to registers in this video and look at the special purpose registers which are inside the CPU. So just to do a tiny recap, what is a register? Well, a register is a very quick, very small store of data held within your processor. You don't have many of these, maybe, well, definitely less than 100 in total. It could be quite a lot less than 100. They are tiny. They will only be able to hold a few bits, maybe maximum 64 bits. Not a lot can be held in these registers. Now, I've color coded these and labeled them a little bit differently because registers are either general purpose registers or special purpose registers. For OCR A level, you don't know much at all about general purpose ones. You won't ever write code which uses general purpose registers, but they're essentially registers which are free for the programmer to use. If you are writing assembly code, which you will later in the course, you in other languages, you're able to use these registers for your own programs. In the assembly code, which is on the course, these don't exist, so we don't ever use these, but they do exist in real processors. Ones we care about for now are the special purpose registers, which play a particular role in the fetch to code execute cycle, which we'll cover in two videos time. Now, these registers will hold one of two things. They'll either hold addresses or they'll hold data. Now I've put data slash instructions because I would rather we try and differentiate between data and instructions. And I'll show you what I mean by this in a minute. So there are five special purpose registers to learn for now. The first one is the program counter, which is shortened to PC. So this holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. It's not holding the actual instruction itself. It's holding the address. So it's always keeping track of the next thing that needs to be done. The only other special purpose register which purely will hold addresses is the memory address register, shown to MAR. So this holds the address of the instruction or data being fetched from memory or written to memory. So every time I either get something from memory or write something to memory, the MAR will be used and it will be holding the address of that either instruction or data bit confusing, I know. So let's look at some examples. So essentially we've got our two registers, which are just boxes effectively sat in our CPU empty initially. And this is a snippet of memory, possibly RAM, where we've got memory cells. In each memory cell, we have an address. So when we say the word address, we're referring to a location in memory. So we need to have locations in memory so that I can pinpoint where to find different items. If I had no addresses, how on earth would I find an item within the billions of possible memory cells of RAM? We have addresses, they are just numbers. So we're quite early on in, in memory here, 13 to 17. Now, in the, in the memory cell, we've got an actual value being stored. These will either be instructions or data. The first three are examples of instructions because if I ran these, they would do something. The bottom two are just numbers they are just data. So that's our sort of difference between instructions and data. And we have got to have them fair, relatively separate in our mind. Instructions can be executed, actually do stuff, but they often require data to work. So they're two separate things, instructions and data. And both of those will have an address as well, which adds a bit of complication. Now, let's say these three instructions are part of a program. Well, this first value here, add five, Let's say that is the instruction currently being executed by our CPU. So therefore, what address will our PC be holding if we're currently executing add five? Well, it won't be 13. It's going to be 14 because the PC always holds the address of the next instruction to be executed, which is 14. Well, let's say add five is finished and I move on to the next one, LDA 16. What happens to my PC? Well, my PC will always be pointing towards the next one. So that would be address 15. What would be happening to my MAR at this point? Well, the MAR initially will mirror the PC. So the value in the PC will be copied into the MAR, which we'll talk more about in the fetch stage in a future video. Now, as you may or may not know, depending on whether you are revising the whole course or just part of it, LDA 16, is telling us to load in the value held at location 16 into our CPU. So really LDA 16 is telling us to load in the value 19 because it's at location 16. 
So what would the MAR hold at that point? Well, the MAR would hold 16 because it's not holding the actual value itself, the actual data itself, which is 19. It's holding the address of the data. Well, the address of 19 is 16. That's why we would see, at least for a while, 16 held in the MAR. Now, these two registers hold addresses. The next three hold either data or instructions. So the MDR is really the sibling of the MAR. So the MAR holds the address, the MDR holds the actual data or instruction being either fetched or written to. So they correspond to each other. The current instruction register, CIR for short, holds the instruction currently being executed, hence the name. So the PC holds the address of the next instruction, the CIR holds the actual instruction currently being executed. And the final one to cover for now is the accumulator, shortened to ACC. This holds the result from an instruction. So when we execute an instruction, we get some data from it that is being held in the accumulator. So again, this is not showing you a full example, but I'm just trying to give you a sense of how these are working at the moment. If we look at how these might behave with this memory. So let's say we're finished with add five, add five is done. We are working on LDA 16. Well, the first job will be to fetch LDA 16 from memory into the CPU. Well, the MAR would hold 14 at that stage. And once it's been fetched, LDA 16 would be stored in the MDR. So MAR holds 14. Eventually, its sibling, MDR, will hold the actual thing being fetched, which was LDA 16. If we're currently working on this instruction, that will also be copied across into our current instruction register, because that's our current instruction we are working on. Now, LDA 16, like I said, is not loading in 16 itself, it's loading in the value held at location 16. So the MAR would be holding 16, like we just said. So therefore the MDR would now be holding 19 because we've loaded in 19 into the CPU. And 19 itself is the result from that instruction. We've loaded in address 16, which was 19. Therefore the ACC will also be holding 19 once it's finished. And that's it, that's us finished with that instruction. That's how these registers loosely work together. Now we'll formalize that in a couple of videos time with specific steps, but the key thing to memorize for now is which ones hold addresses, which ones hold either data or instructions.